Hey guys, VBad here with another V Plays, and welcome back to the Beginner's Guide at version 2020, episode 5. So, in part 4 of this series, we went over specialization, how it works, how to roll stuff for your equipment. But some of the things we didn't talk about is what equipment are we using, and we also didn't talk about crew skills. Now, just to get it out of the way, I'm going to talk about bombers and ground attackers first because I think that they're unique enough that it's going to be easy to talk about those. But then when it comes to your aerial combat aircraft, uh, those are going to be a different type of setup to begin with. So right here, we've got a Doe 215M. This is going to be a tier six German bomber. I feel like this is a very standard bomber. This thing's going to fly at, you know, uh, higher altitude it's going to drop its bombs it's going to destroy ground targets it doesn't have the best defense guns but it doesn't have the worst they're they're enough to be able to deter an already damaged aircraft or uh just possibly keep you alive long enough to get an uh friendly to come up and give you a hand so what are we using for equipment on this? Currently, the equipment we're using are, is going to be something to increase the survivability of the aircraft. Bombers are punching bags, typically. So as a result, they're going to they're going to be taking a lot of flak going into a zone while you're sitting in that bomb reticle. And they're also going to take a lot of damage when somebody's chasing you and you're hopped in your tail gunner and you're trying to fight them off as you're calling for help from everybody from every corner of the map. So we went with... Engine armor protection, not just because it's going to help protect the engine, but also because it can roll bonuses. And one of the bonuses it can roll is tolerance to AA fire. That's one of the things we really wanted. Now, in addition to that, there's not a ton of other better options for this aircraft. Sure, we could have went with the operated engines or we could have went with the combined injection boost system to be able to get a little bit more acceleration out of it. But this is a bomber, guys. We are not going to be out turning or outpacing anything for the most part. We're just going to use our altitude and our hit points as a weapon. So we went with the engine armor protection. Now for the airframe, uh, there's reinforced airframe as well as reinforced skin. Uh, both of those had the possibility of rolling for increased survivability from AA fire. So that's also a good thing to use there. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this stuff with the MEP 1102 for ground attackers as well. For the gun turrets, it, it depends a little bit on how you use your guns because each one of these is going to have their own traits now if you've got an aircraft that just has no defenses on it right it may have a tail gunner but it's like it might as well not even exist then turret armor protection actually isn't a bad bet why did you say that v why would i want that well because this has tolerance to damage from fire it has aircraft hp boosts so it will it also has a maximum speed with boost active which is going to help negate some of the already negatives that you're that you're putting on this aircraft but the whole point here is that with this it increases the survivability of the aircraft yet again so even if the gunners aren't that good this is just going to allow you to be able to help that other part of your aircraft out a little bit more uh, I don't, I typically don't use this. Uh, I do have a ultimate in here because I was goofing around with it, but really this is going to be your major choice. Uh, turret gun laying drive or turret gun sight. Now, the reason I say that is the turret gun sight, if you read it, we can read right here, it says 12% boost to firing range of defensive turrets when controlled manually that means you got to hit the t button hop into the tail gunner and you're the one firing the trigger keeping your reticle centered on the aircraft that increases the range however the turret gun laying drive says this increases oh, come on there we go increases the aiming speed of defensive turrets okay that means that it's essentially going to be when your gunners are firing on their own or when you're firing them manually as well. It also gives you a bit of a boost for just getting that reticle to shrink down. And when you are in your tail gunner, you'll notice sometimes that circle will shrink and you'll get like 
an inner circle will light up. That increases the amount of damage as well as the potential for getting crits. It essentially means you're like really honed in on the target. And this allows you to be able to get to that point that much faster as well as having it happen essentially passively with your tail gunners. Now, there's also some other bonuses on here as well, including a bonus to the rate of fire. You can see in the first tier here. Oh, can I can I look at it? No, it won't let me. No, it won't let me look at it. Um, we'll pull that back up real quick so you guys can take a look. All right. If you read down the list for possible bonus characteristics in that first section, the bottom one says defensive turret rate of fire and bursts. That means it'll increase the rate of fire by 5%. The next one you can actually roll for a 10% increase. So that means that you can essentially get 15% more damage per second from these guns because they're increasing the rate of fire. That's a pretty cool skill, um, but it doesn't help your range at all and it negatively affects your yaw maneuverability. So it's up to you. Your mileage may vary. It depends on how you like to use your aircraft. Uh, you can see I have a myriad of these on in my uh, hangar right here because I have been experimenting with them. I do feel like it pumps up the damage, but it's kind of dependent. Uh, for the outboard weapons, for the bombers, I like to use the bomb sight because it increases the accuracy. Some of the altitudes you'll be flying at, you'd be surprised how much these bombs can be off their target. And there's nothing more frustrating than having to do another run on a target because RNG decided not to favor you. Uh, also, flying at lower altitudes helps decrease the inaccuracy as well. So don't be the guy who's flying at 12,000 feet up in the red for the numbers on your bomber because that's actually really hindering its capabilities. You need to be within its max optimal altitude. Uh, that's just word to the wise for anybody getting into bombers. Do not fly in space. It may s increase your survivability, but it'll decrease your effectiveness to the point that I'd rather have a bot on my team. Uh, consumables. Almost every single, well, I should just say every single one of my aircraft has first aid dressing. Getting gunners back up, getting pilots back up will help increase the capabilities of your aircraft. Uh, for the aircraft that use forward firing guns, this allows you to be able to keep the reticle smaller because then you can kill the guy that's trying to kill you that much more effectively. Or if you're in a bomber, you can get your tail gunner back up. It's just a good rule of thumb. For the engine consumable, we went with an engine cooling. This will allow us to be able to get a free 10 second of boost whenever we need it. It's an on-demand, and there's many times in a battle I think we've all went, man, I just need some boost, just a little bit. And that's something that you can throw on here. Uh, you can also unlock a slot here under turrets consumables to be able to get a universal ammo setup. There is premium tail gunner ammo that you have to pay gold for don't ever use premium ammo i used premium ammo back when i got a bunch of it for free but i also had some gold like i got 250 from my weekly crate this week and you have the automatic resupply checked and the next thing you know you guys are burning up all your gold that you need for um you know buying some permanent camo or buying a hanger slot or buying tokens to get that last few tokens to get your vampires. It just doesn't make sense. I, I keep that stuff in my hanger just because at some point, if there's ever a clan event or a clan wars type thing, I want to have it available, but don't use gold ammo. It, it's, it's just not that effective. Uh, now let's take a look at the ground attacker. The ground attacker is a very similar type of setup here. I ended up going with improved reinforced skin and rolled for tolerance to AA fire. It also decreases the chance of getting damage to my tail and my wings. If you've flown ground attackers enough, you are flying very low. You are flying very fast, especially in these higher tiers. And if you lose your tail, there's been times I've just flopped into the ground just because I couldn't stop the aircraft because I couldn't pull up anymore. So this decreases the potential for that to happen. Uh, I could also go with the reinforced airframe, increase the HP of the aircraft, but I would also decrease the maneuverability at the same time. But this also has a chance to roll for tolerance to AA gunfire, but only in the second uh, category here when you go to advanced equipment. Uh, 
we can't go to advanced because we're not specialized in the aircraft. So I went with the reinforced skin because I can roll tolerance to a fire right off the bat. Uh, this aircraft, I went with the long barrels just because it allows me to be, get, be able to get these ground these guns on ground targets further out. Uh, but a bull carrier is also a good option as well. Uh, really, your flavor is going to be dependent on how you like to fly your ground attacker. Again, there's that first aid dressing we talked about. There's the engine cooling. And even on the forward gun, we're using universal ammo. And then for the payload for air to ground, we are using the improved fragmentation, increasing the damage for bombs and rockets. Now, for the outboard weapons here, there's... We're not going to put on the bomb site because we're not in a bomber at high altitude. We're at low altitude. The chances of me missing with these bombs is really just dependent on me not hitting the button at the right time. So I would opt to go with the hardened pylons because it'll allow me to be able to reload faster. It will adversely affect my airspeed, but it doesn't matter that much in a ground attacker. Getting those munitions back quickly is what's most important for a ground attacker. Highly recommend going with that type of setup. Uh, now let's talk about my... Oh, before we get too far, let's talk about crew skills, okay? Crew skills are important, and we'll take a look at the MEP-1102 just because this pilot has a lot of skills available. What skills should we go for? This is going to be the same for ground attackers as well as bombers. First two skills you want are going to be demolition expert and protection expert. Okay. Demolition expert is going to increase the blast radius and damage of your bombs by 10%. That is necessary. That means that even if you miss you still have that much more of a blast radius, so the miss isn't going to matter that much because they're still inside the explosion. For a protection expert, you are going to be increasing the effectiveness of the durability modules on your aircraft by 40%. Um, another great skill to put on here, which it might be a toss-up between protection expert and cruise flight. Um, cruise flight when you're not taking any damage, so usually when you're traversing between zones, you increase your view range, but more importantly, you get engine thrust and top speed are boost by 3% when you haven't taken any damage for 20 seconds. That's going to happen a lot. You're going to be in a bomber, you're going to go after your first zone, you'll spawn in and you'll immediately have cruise flight active, allowing you to be able to get that much more speed. It also allows you to kind of be an airborne battlefield manager. So you can be like flying between zones while you're waiting for a reload, kind of spinning in a circle and you'll be like F4 that, F2 that, and you can kind of call out targets for your buddies and be like an airborne control platform. Same thing for the MEP-1102. You might not be calling out as many targets because you're going to still be flying really close to the ground, but it'll allow you to be able to get to that next zone that much faster. And then I went with Engine Guru 1 because, again, it allows us to get to that next zone that much faster. Uh, another viable option would be throwing on the uh, this fire repellent over here. What is it? Uh, it's fire extinguisher. That'll decrease the amount of time that you'll stay on fire. So that's just a good option as well. Uh, or decrease the chance of catching on fire. Now let's talk about the gunner. Gunners, there are three skills I think are the best skills to go for. Uh, first and foremost, defensive fire. Defensive fire reduces the damage of an enemy aircraft firing at you by 30% when your gunner is hitting them. That is a lot of damage reduction, 30%. Like we said, you're just going to want to try and survive a lot of the time until somebody can come and help you. And this will allow you to survive 30% longer taking all of that incoming fire. Now, in I think the next best skill, and this is debatable, some people will debate with me, that quick reflexes is the next thing you should go for. While you're waiting for this, and you got four skills, throw on endurance, it'll keep your gunners up. But once you get these, the fifth skill, throw on quick reflexes, this will reduce the aim time of your turrets by 50%. Why is this important? 
because it means that passively your guys are getting their guns on target faster, which means that you're getting the effects of defensive fire that much more quickly. That's my thought. Now, some people say the first skill you should go for would be precision gunner, which isn't a bad option. Precision gunner allows you to be able to increase the critical chance of the tail gunner, okay? This is great for when somebody's chasing you. If you can take out their pilot, it's going to kill their accuracy, which is going to really increase your survivability as well. But you are waiting for RNG on this one. You're, you're hoping that the random number generator will allow you to be able to get that crit on the pilot or crit on the engine so you can pull away. But if that guy repairs or heals, you got to wait for lightning to strike twice. And while I do think it's a very valuable skill for maybe your sixth, or in my case, it was my eighth skill, uh, I do think it's valuable, but it's you're relying on RNG and it's it's up for debate. You guys, you know, your mileage may vary, but I think that that's a viable option for all of these ground attack aircraft, whether it be an attack aircraft or a bomber aircraft. All right. Now let's talk about fighter aircraft. Fighter aircraft, uh, gun sight, uh, lightweight wing frame, the some type of an improved engine modification. I prefer operated engine on all of my light aircraft and my multi rolls because they tend to bleed speed a lot because they're always turning. Operated engine allows you to be able to maintain that speed throughout the engagement while you could throw on the boost injection or the turbines, do the same thing. Uh, they increase the effectiveness of your boost, but once that boost is gone, it's gone. So I found operated engine helps a lot by, for maintaining velocity, keeping you at that higher cruise speed, or even when you let go of the boost, it keeps you coasting better. It also allows you to be able to climb up to much higher altitudes when you're making gradual climbs. So... I think that that's the best move. I've converted all of my aircraft to it after doing some testing. Now for the second slot for the engine area, if once I get this thing specialized, I will go with lightweight power unit. Lightweight power unit increases the maneuverability that much more. Sure, I can take some engine damage, but oh, by the way, on this aircraft, I'd unlock another slot for a consumable so I can go ahead and throw on the manual engine restart for when that situation does occur. This is a perfect opportunity to talk about consumables. Oh, first aid dressing. It's on every plane. I never take it off. I would be throwing pneumatic control assist on here because those times that I am in a dogfight, I'm going to dab that button and get that extra maneuverability so I can get on them quicker and take them out before they can take me out. It's just going to give you that much more of an edge when you're going up an equally capable aircraft or at least comparable. Boost cooler is glued to almost all of my aircraft. Having 10 seconds of boost available is always going to be beneficial. And then, like I said, uh, either going with manual engine restart for those times that your aircraft tends to lose its engine a lot, or improved mixture gives you extra thrust as well as cruise speed, which is not a bad option either if your aircraft tends not to lose its engine a lot. Uh, and then, of course, universal ammo. But like I said before, do not be tempted to use these other types of ammunition you might be getting some free ones here and there from the from uh, opening up crates and stuff but once you use it up you're going to start using gold and by the time you realize it you're really going to be hurting and oh by the way it's it's gold ammo you really want to lose some credibility with your friends and stuff throw gold ammo on because it's a crutch i don't suggest using it i do suggest using universal ammo though because it inc it increases the chance of fire and critical for your guns from the already existing chance and it only costs silver it's like what six thousand silver and you're it's it's worth it it's worth it um for turn fighters it's debatable i would probably still go with upgraded engine just because i feel like engine power is important but you could easily go for your engine slot with the lightweight covering here for a turn fighter like if you're flying like in an a7m or something like that uh for the extra airframe slot when you get that option for this line 
I would suggest going with reinforced skin. If you're in a turn fighter, one that's going to be a lower altitude. Because you're going to be taking a lot of AA fire, your aircraft doesn't have a lot of hit points, and this will also decrease the chance of losing your tail, which for a dogfighter is a big deal. So that's my thoughts on the second slot for airframe for a turn fighter. An altitude fighter, I'd be throwing on polished skin in this slot if I had two airframe slots, but my first option would almost always be lightweight wing frame. Multi rolls. Ha. So, multi rolls are an interesting beast. Oh, here, we didn't talk about skills. Let's talk about skills for altitude fighters real quick. This guy is up to the hilt. He's got tons of skills available, but one of the first skills I think you should always equip is going to be firefighter. Firefighter, if you roll the wings and kind of kick the nose a little bit, you will extinguish a fire immediately. That means that's why we've never put a fire extinguisher in any of these things because it just doesn't matter. I can just put it out with a rolling maneuver. Operated engine for an altitude fighter is paramount. Or uh, sorry, engine guru. So you, you need it for that extra boost. Uh, I typically go with Marksman 1. I don't think it's ever a bad option to go with. Um, and then... I do really favor Aerodynamic Expert because it's going to allow you to get 40% more out of your equipment that affect maneuverability and speed. Almost everything we said we're going to put in for the engine or the aircraft slot is either going to increase maneuverability or increase speed. And by having this skill, it will increase the capabilities of those components even more. Now, I had some extra skills available, so I decided to throw them at aerobatic, Aerobatics Expert, which allows me to be able to get even more maneuverability, 2% in all axes. So that's exactly what we did. So this guy's kind of trained up to the hilt, so he's got a lot of options. When it comes to a turn fighter, however, I'm going to be prioritizing getting Aerobatics Expert. I'm still getting Firefighter, but I'm also getting Aerobatics Expert. Uh, I would also go for Marksman, and I would go for Aerodynamic Expert, again, for the same reasons we mentioned before. I would go with Engine Guru next, but it's really just the order for all of these light fighters, uh, depending on their role. But in the end, I'm going to end up setting this pilot up the same way I did with the P-51D. I am sure there are people out there that have different ways that they like to do things. That is my way. You guys can listen to the debates down in the comments and make your own decisions for yourself. Ah, now we'll get to multi-rolls. Multi-rolls are a weird beast because they got to do a little bit of everything. So I usually set them up for a little bit of everything. Uh, I will go with the gun sight to increase the accuracy of the guns. I will go with lightweight wing frames. That way the times that they got a dogfight with those air defense aircraft, I can dogfight. Or I can dogfight another multi-roll. I will go with the upgraded engine for all the reasons I mentioned before when I were talking about the light fighters. And then for the second slot for airframe, when you got a second slot for airframe for multi rolls, polish skin all day. It's going to increase the acceleration in the dive. And you're going to be diving a lot when you're coming into a zone and dropping your munitions. So this will allow you to be able to build up some speed, drop the munitions, leave the zone essentially, and then come back in and attack the air defense aircraft. Uh, if we had a second slot for engine here, I would be throwing on the lightweight power unit. It's pretty standard stuff at this point. Uh, for the outboard weapon slot, it depends. Uh, thanks, V. That helps a lot. Um, there is an aerodynamic pylon which reduces the drag effect of the munitions. There's also a hardened pylon which decreases the reload. But hurts the airspeed. I don't like hurting my airspeed on my multi-rolls. So typically, I like to take the aerodynamic pylon. Also, the aerodynamic pylon can roll some benefits for the effectiveness of bombs and rockets. So it's not a bad thing to go for. And then I can also throw on the consumable for the air-to-ground munitions to increase their effectiveness for the times that I am using them. Uh, and then... If I were running, though, an aircraft that only used rockets or only used bombs, I would be tempted to throw on the rocket sight uh, for, the, or for the rocket 
guy. Uh, I don't know if I, I may throw on the accuracy, the bomb site, but I really feel like that's more for bombers. So really, I think the only thing I would do differently besides the aerodynamic pylons on my ground attackers is that if I had an all rocket build, I would probably be tempted to use the rocket site because you can roll to increase the effectiveness of the rockets and also increase the range because I feel like rockets are a bit of a death trap. Rockets require you to get close. And by doing that, you've lo you've sacrificed all your altitude to get close to be able to use those rockets. Plus, they're not fire and forget. If I had, this thing carries a 1600 pound bomb. That is a drop turn and the bomb's gonna go and hit the target. The rockets, I need to line them up properly. So having the site will A, make them more accurate, and B, make them more effective and give them better range. Better range means I'm not going to be as close to those ground targets, so I can actually use them with a little bit, I can be a little bit more deliberate. That's, that's my thought. Oh, look at that. First aid dressing. And we also have pneumatic control, and we have engine cooling, and we have universal ammo, and we'll be running the RDX ammo. Standard stuff. Nothing changes in my consumable slots. Um, uh, I, if I have a second option for the consumables over here for engine and airframe, I would throw on the ability to repair my engines or repair my wings. That's, that's my standard stuff. For the pilot skills, um, firefighter. These guys really like speed typically, so engine guru. Then I, well, and then I would go with demo expert, okay? Demo expert's important because most multi rolls, this is a true multi roll, by the way. This is an air to ground multi roll, the F2G. So, demolition expert. Now, there are multi rolls out there that are more air to air, like a BVP 210 or an F94D. For those, reference altitude fighter. Go ahead. Just go to the altitude fighter section and equip those that way. That's that's my best advice for you. But for the rest of these bad boys, demolition expert, then I would go with marksman one, then I would go with aerodynamic expert. Those are my choices. Debates in the comments, please. <laughs> uh, heavy aircraft. These are an interesting beast. And Gun sight is a very viable option here, okay? But I've been experimenting with the GSU with this particular aircraft just because it tends to be operating well above its max maneuverability speed. Because its max maneuverability speed or its max optimal is 574 miles an hour. But it boosts up to 610 and I'm usually around 590 miles an hour in this thing. So I feel like that's that's a that's a safer bet for how fast I tend to be going. Uh, for the airframe, usually I'd say go with polished skin. Heavies are all about speed. They're boom and zoom platforms. The maneuverability is a secondary feature. It's still nice to have some maneuverability, which is why we went with a lightweight power unit when we opened up the second slot, but primarily I want to see you guys putting in some type some type of a boost either a boost injection or a high-speed turbine. These are going to give you much more effectiveness out of your boost. Well, V, you just told us about how the boost isn't as good for, for altitude fighters. Why is it good for heavies? Because in a heavy, one, they're heavier, <laughs> so they tend to hold their speed better just based on momentum. And two, they're not turning and bleeding all that speed. They're going in very straight lines. And by the way, they're picking up a lot of that speed in the downhill with the polished skin. But then when they lift that nose up, the boost is allowing them to maintain it as they climb back up to high altitudes. And one of the things you'll note if you, let's minimize all this, go to altitude performance. You see this uh, climb rate down here, rate of climb 525? 488 you know what does that it's the boost injection system okay now if i were to swap it out and throw on engine it gives me an extra two feet per second not that much of an improvement 
Um, for an aircraft that's already going to be moving so fast that the momentum can essentially carry it, the boost is really there to help keep that speed or get it up to those speeds and maintain it. Uh, that's why I really think it's advantageous to put those on there, especially at lower tier, because at lower tier, they tend to, they tend to bleed a lot of speed in the climb. So like for my bow fighter, for instance, I can get a lot of speed in the dive, but as soon as I lift that nose up, I start losing all that speed and the boost will just carry me back up to altitude so I can come back and do another boom and zoom and drop that nose and get the airspeed back again. Uh, for anything mounting 30 millimeter cannons, this is more comes down to caliber, by the way. For the forward firing weapon mounts, here's my general rule. And this has nothing to do with airframe. It has everything to do with caliber of guns. For 20 millimeter cannons, typically I like using long barrels. Or if I'm using any high caliber gun that has high shell velocity, like sniper guns, like TA-152, the Horton 229, the, uh, anything on the Yak-9 line. So like your I-211, your Su-9, your Yak-9, Yak-9U, Yak-7, I-215, long barrels, great options. But using them on your 30s, because your 30s have short range, is putting a band-aid on a bullet wound for 30 millimeter cannons they are the bane of almost everybody's existence for those that haven't gotten used to them what i have found is that more of a shotgun effect tends to work for me so your mileage may vary but with the advanced bull carrier it allows me to be able to keep the guns cooler longer because it gives you longer burst length and it's not tightening up the accuracy so much so it's an all or nothing concept it's an all or nothing concept with a setup with long barrels and a gun sight because either you're hitting with like all three shells or you're missing or all four shells or you're missing with all four shells with this i might only get one or two of my 30s to hit initially until i really start to, to pull the lead properly and close the distance but at that point, you've probably already been crippled, and now I'm just finishing you off as I close the distance. That's why I have opted to go with the advanced reinforced bull carriers. Gas-operated action, you can easily use this for the 20s, but know that you're going to end up overheating them a lot, and you're going to decrease the accuracy. 20s tend to have the best range and best accuracy for their guns, so giving them long gun barrels increases that effectiveness. Gas-operated action, I think, is a must for anything using machine guns because they're already going to need to get very close to use those machine guns effectively, and they struggle for damage per second. Gas-operated action is going to increase the rate of fire, which allows you to just hopefully kill something a little bit quicker and increase that chance of getting a fire because if each round has a certain percentage to cause a fire and you're hitting it with that many more rounds, the chances of getting that fire are much higher and that is where 50 gals really start to become the bane of people's existence. So that's my recommendation. But that has more to do with the caliber of guns than it does with the aircraft itself. Now let's talk about skills. Oh, by the way, consumables, you'll, you'll note here, I went with improved mixture control because I tend not to lose my engines that much. Or if I do, I just dip the nose and let momentum carry me. Uh, skills. So it's an, it's a, it's a heavy, right? The thing needs speed. How many times can I say it's a, it's a, uh, engine guru one's going to increase the engine output by 3%. That's a no brainer. Uh, I threw on accuracy here because apparently I've sacrificed so much everywhere else. I've, a little bit more is going to help me just a little bit with just a dispersion. I still want to have a shotgun, but I, I want that shotgun to have a bit of a choke on it. Uh, and then I went with Raptor Strike. Now that I know that Raptor Strike does work and I use heavies very much in a dive on a target type of capability... This is going to increase the chance of causing fires and getting crits by 50% when diving on an aircraft. After learning that you, the indicator is what's broken in this game, okay? Raptor Strike, anything that involves any type of dive skill like Mary Loveheart uh, for Valkyrie Strike, these things, as long as you get within 60% 
of the max dive speed and your nose is below 45 degrees, it will trigger and it will not turn off until you go below that 60% of that max dive speed or you raise the nose above negative 15 degrees. You don't need to maintain 45, you just need to maintain below negative 15. You need it initially to trigger, but you can slowly bring it up as you sight in on a target so you're not eating the ground. Don't eat the ground. That's another reason I went with a G-suit, by the way, is because the number of times I've accidentally dived at dove a heavy fighter into the dirt uh, trying to get one of these skills to proc, uh, the G-suit helps you prevent that G-lock, and that tends to help out a lot with especially the way I play the 262s. So that's my recommendation. Uh, we do see that I'm using aerodynamic expert here. I'm not using firefighter because the role to put out a fire is much more difficult, but the chance of getting a fire caused on your aircraft at this in, in a heavy fighter is much less. You can see in survivability, resistance to fire is at 60. That's a pretty good resistance to fire. It doesn't mean you won't get lit on fire. It just means it's that much less likely. So... That's my thoughts there. And then I went with Eagle Eye just because I had one skill available. Um, I, I am tempted to take these two skills and throw them in the Engine Guru too. Uh, but with the amount of things that we have put into maneuverability and airspeed, I feel like it's beneficial to have this on here, especially when you've specialized. I, I'd say that this skill you get the best bang for your buck when you specialize your aircraft. Uh, until you specialize your aircraft, it's debatable, and that might be something we see in the comments as well. I've been trolling the forums a lot lately, and that's a, that's a constant thread. Now, hopefully this didn't confuse you guys too much, but the basic concept is, this is the general rules of how I set up my aircraft. Everybody's mileage will vary depending on how they fly their aircraft, the aircraft specifically themselves. These are only six examples of how I've set up my airframe and my, my ideas. There are many different schools of thought, many different ways to approach this problem, and I've seen that in the forums as well. So I look forward to hearing the debates down below. Uh, but guys, do be aware that this is an opinion-based question for a lot of this. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this part of the beginner's guide. And good luck setting up your aircraft. And happy hunting. Happy hunting.